our goal for the resolution and image size lesson is to understand what resolution is and how resolution affects image quality. We will review common print and web resolutions and use that information to calculate image size in inches and in pixels. We'll define what a megapixel is and then use that knowledge to calculate megapixel values based on camera dimensions. Digital images are most often made from a series of pixels. When an image is made from pixels, it is called a raster image and contains a resolution. Resolution is defined as the number of pixels per square inch in an image. It is described in terms of PPI or pixels per inch. For example, if an image is 3 inches by 6 inches at 300 PPI, with 300 PPI being the resolution, each 1 inch square of that image has 300 pixels across and 300 pixels tall. We can use this information to calculate the total number of pixels in the image, both horizontally and vertically. In the example on this slide, you can see that an image that's raster-based, when zoomed out, just looks like an image. But the further we zoom in on the image, you can see that it's actually composed of little squares called pixels. When an image is described in terms of pixels instead of inches, it is called the pixel dimension of the image. The pixel dimension is also referred to as the absolute size of the image. So for example, when an image is described as 900 pixels by 1800 pixels, instead of the 3 inch by 6 inch at 300 ppi example from the last slide, it is being described in its absolute size or its pixel dimension. The following descriptions are both accurate ways to describe the same exact image. So an image could be 3 inches by 6 inches at 300 ppi, and that gives us a description of how big that image would be when it's printed, which we'll learn about later in the lesson. Or we could say that the size of the image is 900 pixels by 1800 pixels, which is describing it in its absolute size in terms of pixels. Let's take a look at a simpler example. The example below shows an image that is 1 inch by 1 inch square but this image has a resolution of 10 ppi instead of 300 ppi. That means this image has 10 pixels across and 10 pixels tall in every one inch square of the image. 10 is a small number, so we could actually count each pixel if we wanted to. We could even do some basic math to figure out how many total pixels are in the image, and we could multiply the pixels across 10 by the pixels tall 10 to get 100 total pixels. So if we count, we can literally see that if this if this was one inch. It is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pixels across, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pixels tall. That would make this image ten PPI, or ten pixels per inch, or ten pixels for every one inch of the image. Most images are not one inch by one inch. Let's look at an image that's 5 inches by 3 inches, but it's still only 10 ppi or pixels per inch. Every 1 inch square within the image is still 10 pixels across and 10 pixels tall because that's the resolution or the ppi that we've established. And if you really wanted to, you could still count how many pixels are across and tall in the entire image. So we could count 1 inch and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that's the first inch, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It gets complicated to figure out exactly how many pixels are in the image because counting is no longer reasonable. But we could do some basic math, right? If we know that every inch has 10 pixels and there are 5 inches across, 5 times 10 is 50. So if we counted these pixels, there would be 50 across. And 3 inches tall means that we have 10, 10, and 10 which makes the image 50 pixels across and 30 pixels tall. Let's look at another image. This image is also 5 inches by 3 inches, but this time I've increased the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. We can no longer count each individual pixel across and pixel tall, but we can accept that each 1 inch square will have 72 pixels across and 72 pixels tall. And so the first inch will have 72 pixels, and the second inch will have 72 pixels, and the third inch will have 72 pixels. And because there are 5 inches across, we could multiply 5 times 72 to get the total number of pixels across the image. And we can multiply 3 inches tall times 72 pixels, and we could get the height of the image.
here is one last example. The resolution of the image is 300 pixels per inch or 300 ppi, meaning that there are 300 pixels across and 300 pixels tall squeezed into every one inch square of the image. Again, we can no longer count on each individual pixel, but we do accept that if we were to zoom in, every one inch would have 300 pixels across and 300 pixels tall. And we could use the same logic to figure out how many pixels are across, right? So if I know that every one inch has 300 pixels and that the image is five inches across, I could multiply 300 times five to get 1,500 pixels across. And if the image is three inches tall, I can multiply 300 times three and decide that the image is 900 pixels tall. How does resolution affect image quality? If we back up, you can actually kind of see it on the slides. The higher the resolution, the higher the image quality. So we can, as we increase the resolution from 10 to 72 to 300, you can see that now, instead of seeing pixels, you're seeing an image appear or the illusion of a picture. So resolution is important. It is the key determining factor for image quality when an image is output. In general, images with more pixels have higher image quality. And we say in general because different output types have different resolution requirements. For example, when an image is printed at 300, resolution is standard. And any resolution lower than 300 ppi causes image quality loss. However, images that are output for the web or for a display device only require 72 pixels per inch. So a web image formatted at 72 ppi actually has a higher image quality than an image that's printed at 100 ppi because 72 is the appropriate web resolution, but 100 is lower than standard print resolution, which is 300 ppi. 300 ppi is standard printing resolution. Images that are destined to be printed should be formatted at a resolution of 300. If a print image has a resolution of less than 300 ppi, it will begin to lose image quality and look blurry due to pixelation as illustrated below. The 72 ppi print image is very pixelated. And now you can see if you look at the example that 300 ppi looks great, it looks like the photo. And 225, it looks okay. If we compare it to the first, we can kind of start to see that there's a little bit of image quality loss, but we're still kind of getting away with it. When we get down to 150 ppi, you can start to see pixels if you look at it closely. And when we get down to 72, the image is completely blurry and out of focus because the ideal resolution for printing is 300 and anything below 300, you will begin to see image quality loss. When, image, when an image is printed with ink on paper, the natural human eye cannot see any image quality higher than 300 ppi. So for that reason, if we increase the resolution above 300 to 320 or 400, or anything higher than 300 pixels per inch, we are essentially just wasting storage space on our computer hard drive or cloud storage because the image will look the same to us. You can see that illustrated in the example below. The 600 ppi image, or double the resolution needed, looks exactly the same as the image when it's printed at 300 ppi. So we don't want to format images higher than 300 ppi when we're formatting images for print because we're just wasting storage space. We don't need it to be any higher. Just like 300 ppi is standard resolution when printing, 72 ppi is standard resolution for web or display images. Images destined to be viewed on a computer monitor or display device should have a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. If a web-based image has a resolution less than 72, it will begin to have image quality loss and start to look blurry due to pixelation. As a caveat to this, web images are, are more often described in terms of pixel dimension or absolute size because users get to determine the resolution of their own display devices. So again, the ideal resolution for web images is 72 pixels per inch. Anything lower, we begin to see image quality loss. So again, if we go down to 60, we're still kind of getting away with it. If we go down to 50, which is a significant drop compared to 72, we start to see the image quality loss. If you look closely, we can see actual squares or pixels. And by the time we get to 25 pixels per inch, it's incredibly pixelated and blurry, and we can't use that image anymore for the web. And just like printing, if we exceed the resolution that's needed for our output, 
In this case, if we exceed 72 pixel per inch, again, we are creating higher file size images. And in theory, we're creating higher quality images, but we can't see any better, so that all looks the same to us. So we should shoot to target 72 pixels per inch. The standard image resolution for web images is much lower than that of printed images because of the nature of display devices. Monitors are illuminated with light. The light subtly blurs the edges of the image, causing much lower resolution images to look acceptable to the human eye. It should be noted that the default resolution for web images is 72 pixels per, uh, pixels per inch, but web images are usually not described in terms of their resolution. They are uh, described in their absolute size. So when you format an image for the web, you'll more often say that it's 800 pixels across and 400 pixels tall, as opposed to saying that it's 3 inches by 2 inches at 72 pixels per inch, or something like that. Okay, so let's get down to the math portion of, of this lesson. How do we calculate image size? There are three important values to consider when calculating image sizes. If you have any two of these values, you can calculate the third. But if you only have one, you cannot calculate either of the other two. And so the three values that we will be looking for in our problems are resolution, which is the pixels per inch, and you can see I've listed some examples here. You need to have the width and the height of the image in inches, and or the width and the height of the image in pixels. So if you had the image size in inches and in pixels, you could then calculate the resolution or the pixels per inch or the PPI. If you had the image size in inches and the resolution, you could figure out what the image size in pixels is. And then also, if you had the image size in pixels and the resolution, you could then calculate how big that image would be in inches. So the two formulas that we will use to calculate image size are the image size in inches formula and the image size in pixels formula. To calculate the size of an image in inches, you will divide the width and the height of the image in pixels by the resolution, and that will give you the size of the image in inches, both width and height. To calculate the size of an image in pixels, we will multiply the size of the image in pixels times the PPI or the resolution, and then also multiply the size of the image, uh, the height of the image, I should probably make these terms match, times the resolution, and that will give you the size of the image uh, in pixels, both horizontally and vertically, or the width and the height of the image. I would recommend pausing the slideshow here and copying down these formulas so that you have them handy as we move forward. So let's calculate the size of an image in inches. The formula used to calculate the size of an image in inches, which is shown again below, is most often used to determine the size of an image when printing. We can use it to determine the largest size an image can be printed at based on how many pixels are already in the image and what our desired output resolution is. I say that 300 is standard printing resolution, but it should be noted that there are actually a lot of acceptable printing resolutions other than 300 ppi, and they are based on a formula that involves the paper that you're using, the ink type, the image type, the printing process that you're printing on, and more. And so for our class, we will say printing resolution is 300, but put a little asterisk on that and just know that when you dive deeper into the subject of uh, printing and image quality, there are, there are a range of acceptable resolutions. The reason that we say 300 PPI is standard printing resolution is because 300 PPI is acceptable for almost every single instance. A lot of those other resolutions will say, oh, you don't need 300, you can use 240. And so if we use 300, we're still making sure the image is high enough quality for what we need. Okay, so let's walk through an example together. How big is the following image in inches if we know that it's 2,025 pixels across and 2,700 pixels uh, tall and the resolution is 300 pixels per inch? We will start this problem by identifying the correct formula to use and that will be the image size in inches formula. So we need to input the width and height in pixels, and we need to divide by the resolution. Those are values we need to pull from our problem. So then we need to identify those variables. 
In the problem, we're told that the image is 2,025 pixels across and 2,700 pixels tall, and the resolution is 300, so I wrote those down. I color-coded them so you can see where they're going to go into the formula. And then we can divide the pixels across 2,025 by 300 and 2,700 pixels by 300. When we're done, we will have the image size in, inch, uh, in inches, both across and tall, for the width and the height of the image. And so in this case, when I divide 2,025 by 300, I get 6.75 inches. And when I divide 2,700 by 300, I get 9. This is pixels per inch. And so in math, if you have something that's on the top of a fraction and the bottom, it cancels itself out. So I have pixels on the top and pixels on the bottom. So I'm going to cancel pixels out and cancel pixels out. And that's why when I divide 2,025 by 300, I end up with 6.75 inches because the inches is not getting canceled, just the pixels part of the pixels per inch. So the correct answer to this example is 6.75 inches by 9 inches. Let's try another example. We have an image at 720 pixels across and 576 pixels tall and the resolution is 72. To start this problem again we need to identify the correct formula to use which is what you'll have to do when you take your homework and your tests and your exams. The formula for calculating the size of an image in inches is the width and height of the image in pixels divided by the resolution. I take a pause and I identify the variables that I need and they are 720 pixels by 576 pixels for the width and height and the resolution based on the information I have received is 72. Now I can plug that into the formula so I can take 720 pixels divided by 72 and 576 pixels divided by 72. 720 divided by 72 is 10 inches, and 576 divided by 72 is 8 inches. So this image is 10 inches by 8 inches. Try this next, next example on your own. Pause the video, and when you're ready to move forward, you can see if your answer was correct. So again, we are practicing the same problem, but we still need to identify the correct formula. So in this example, the formula we will use is the width and the height of the image in pixels divided by the resolution, which happens to be 1800 pixels divided by 900 pixels, and the resolution is 300. So when we plug that into our formula, we have 1800 pixels divided by 300 pixels per inch equals 6 inches, and then 900 pixels divided by 300 pixels per inch gives us 3, and we're left with inches. So the correct answer is that this image is 6 inches by 3 inches. Okay, try one more example on your own and then we'll move on to another type of problem. Again, we have an example. It's still 1800 pixels by 900 pixels, but in this example we've changed the resolution to 72. So we need to identify the formula we'll use, which is width uh, and height of the image in pixels divided by its resolution. We've identified the width and height of the image as 1800 by 900 pixels and the resolution is 72. So when we divide 1800 pixels by 72 it comes out to 25 inches and 900 pixels divided by 72 pixels per inch comes out to 12 and a half inches. So this image, the same exact image, the same exact pixels, instead of being 6 inches by 3 inches at 300 resolution if we were to reformat it and put it on a display device at 72 ppi, it would be 25 inches by 12 and a half inches. There are practice problems that I have included in this slideshow, so if you'd like some practice, please try these problems on your own. The answer is on the next slide, which I'm going to skip over pretty fast so that you don't see the answers, um, and uh, enjoy practicing these problems. So the next type of problem we'll practice is calculating the image size, but this time, instead of calculating it in inches, we'll calculate it in pixels. The formula used to calculate the size of an image in pixels, which is shown below, can be used to determine how many pixels are needed to produce the image size needed for a project. For example, if I know I want to print an image at 8 inches by 10 inches, I can use the formula below to determine the number of pixels my image must contain to be able to output that image at 8 inches by 10 inches. Then, when I search the internet or I use my camera or my, my digital camera or my phone um, to capture images, 
I can narrow down my search to only images that contain the number of pixels I need for my image. Well, it can actually be the number of pixels or more because I can always cut some out. But you don't want to find an image that doesn't have enough pixels. So the formula we'll use to calculate the size of an image in pixels is the size of the image in inches. So the, the width and the height or the, the horizontal and the vertical measurement of the image in pixels. And then we'll multiply both of those values times the resolution. Here's an example that we can walk through together. What is the pixel dimension or the absolute size of an image if it is 7 inches by 5 inches and we know that the resolution is 72 pixels per inch? First, always identify the correct formula. So if I need to know the pixel dimension, what I'm looking for is the formula to calculate the size of the image in pixels. Once I have that formula, I can identify the variable. So I need the size of the image in inches, which I've identified as 7 inches by 5 inches, and I need to know the resolution, which is 72. Last, we can plug our variables into the formula. So 7 times 72, and then 5 inches times 72 pixels per inch. 72 ppi is 72 pixels per inch, or 72 pixels slash an inch, which makes it a fraction. When we write it as a fraction, um, we are going to have variables, uh, we're going to have values on the top and the bottom of our fraction that cancel out. So we're actually going to cancel inches out instead of pixels out in this example. So inches is going to be on the top of our fraction and the bottom, which cancel out. So our answer will be in terms of pixels. When we do our math, 7 times 72 is 504, so it will be 504 pixels across. And uh, 5 times 72 is 360, so it will be 360 pixels across. So the size of this image in its pixel dimension, which is also its absolute size, is 504 pixels by 360 pixels. Here's another example. What is the pixel dimension of an image that is 16 inches by 19 and a half inches? And this time it's 300 pixels per inch. So we should be able at this point to say, oh, that's going to be printed. So how many pixels do I need to be able to print an image at 16 inches by 19 inches, uh, 19 and a half inches at 300 pixels per inch? Step one, always identify your formula. We'll use the same formula for calculating the size of an image in pixels. Step two, identify your variables. So this image is 16 inches by 19 and a half inches, and the resolution is 300 pixels per inch. And then last, we can plug that information into the formula. So 16 times 300 is 4,800. The inches cancel out, so we're left with pixels. 19 and a half times 300 is 5,850. The inches cancel out, we're left with pixels. So this image, the absolute size or the pixel dimension of this image, is 4,800 pixels across and 5,850 pixels tall. Try this next example on your own. I recommend pausing the video and when you're done hit play to see if you got the answer correct. In this example we have an image at 7.25 uh, inches across and 11 inches tall and the resolution is 300. So if we use our same formula again our variables, variables will be 7.25 inches by 11 inches and then our resolution variable is 300 pixels per inch. We can then plug that into our formula. 7.25 times 300 pixels per inch is 2,175. Inches cancels out, so it will be pixels. And 11 times 300 is 3,300. The inches cancel out, and we're left with pixels. So the size of this image, the absolute size of the image, is 2,175 pixels across and 3,300 pixels tall. What this tells me is that if I wanted to print an image that's 7.25 inches by 11, and I'm searching for an image either for my own collection or on the internet to use. I need to make sure that that image has at least 2,175 pixels across and 3,300 pixels tall. Okay, try one more example and then we'll move on to megapixels. So in this example, we're again going to take the same image, the 7.25 image by 11 inch image, but we're going to change the resolution to 72 which means we're going to put it on the internet instead of printing it, right? So how many pixels does that image need if we're going to put it on, in the, on the web instead of printing it? The formula is the same, horizontal and vertical inches. We'll multiply that times the resolution. The variables are the image is 7.25 by 11 inches, and now the resolution is 72 pixels per inch. When we plug that into our formula, we'll have 7.25 times 72 equals 522 pixels. 
and 11 times 72 is 792 pixels. So this image, the same exact size in inches image, if we were to change it from printing resolution to web resolution, would be 522 pixels across by 792 pixels tall, which is a significant change. This is going to be a incredibly small file compared to the one that was 3300 pixels tall. Again, I have created some practice problems for you to practice. Um, I don't think that you need to do all of them unless you want to, and the answers will be on the next slide, which I'm going to skip. Our next calculation will be based on megapixels. So let's start by answering the question, what is a megapixel? When purchasing a digital camera, it is easy to become confused with all of the different features they offer. One feature in particular, megapixels, can be narrowed down by easily determining how many, how large of an image you wish to output. So if you are only ever going to put images on the internet, you could calculate the megapixel needed for those projects. Or if you're going to print your image, you can decide what's the largest size image you're going to print with, and you can use that to calculate how many megapixels you need. A megapixel is just another way of saying one million pixels. So one megapixel equals one million pixels. Megapixels are calculated by multiplying the maximum number of pixels a camera can capture horizontally by the maximum number of pixels it can capture vertically, aka the values that we were just calculating for the size of the image in pixels. The actual calculation for a megapixel may come out to a very long decimal, but a camera manufacturer is usually going to round that to either a whole number or a single decimal, like 12 megapixels or 12.6 megapixels. For the purpose of this class, I would like you to round all decimal places to two decimals when calculating megapixel. So let's calculate some megapixels. Here is a basic example. If a camera can capture 1,000 pixels horizontally and 1,200 and pixels vertically, we can multiply 1,000 times 1,200 to calculate the total number of pixels that would be in the entire image. So that's 1,000 times 1,200 equals 1,200,000 pixels. But we can't stop there because a megapixel equals 1 million pixels. All we've done is calculated how many pixels are in the image. So then to convert the 1,200,000 megapixels of pixels that are in that image, we need to divide that by a million so that we're looking at it in terms of megapixels. In this case, the answer would come out to 1.2 megapixels. So our answer would be 1.2 megapixels. However, if the answer came out to 1.234657 megapixels, I would like you to round your answer to two decimal places in this course, so the correct answer for that example would end up being 1.23. So again, what we did was we multiplied the width and the height of the image in pixels, 1,000 pixels across by 1,200 pixels tall, which told us the total number of pixels in the image is 1,200,000. The formula used to calculate megapixels is the number of pixels in the image divided by a million pixels per megapixel. Pixels will cancel out and will knock them both out in the problem. When you divide 1,200,000 by a million, you get 1.2. We'll carry the megapixels over, so this image would have 1.2 megapixels. Let's try an actual example. How many megapixels is a Nikon Coolpix S93 camera if it can capture 4,608 pixels across and 3,456 pixels tall? The formula we're going to use is the total pixels in the image divided by a million. But those are variables, right? The total pixels in the image is a variable. In order to input that, I need to calculate what that is. So step two would be to use the, the uh, to calculate the number of pixels in the image by multiplying the pixels across or the width of the image in pixels by the height of the image in pixels. In this example, we're told that the image is 4,608 pixels across by 3,456 pixels tall. When you multiply those two values, it comes out to 15,925,248 pixels are in that image. That's a lot of pixels. And then, in order to calculate how many megapixels there are, because that's 1 million pixels, we'll take that total and divide by a million. So when you divide, you get 15.925248 megapixels. 
When we round this to two decimal places, the correct answer will be 15.93. As a refresher for rounding, if you're rounding to two decimal places, you look at the second decimal, it's a two. If the number to its immediate right is five or higher, you round two up to three. If it's four or lower, it stays the same. So if we were rounding this to four decimal places, we would look at the fourth decimal place, which also is a two. Look at the number immediately to the right. If it's four or less, in this case it is, the number stays the same. So this number rounded to four decimal places would be 15.9252. If we were rounding to five decimal places, we would look at the fifth decimal place. It's a four. If the number immediately to the right is five or higher, which it is, the four rounds up to a five. So the answer for five decimal places would be 15.92525. Here's another example. We have another camera. It's a Nikon D90 SLR. It can capture 4,288 pixels across and 2,848 pixels tall. How many megapixels can this camera capture? So again, we want to use the formula of dividing the total number of pixels in the image by a million, but we can't do that until we calculate the total number of pixels. To calculate that, we need to multiply the size of the image in pixels, 4,288, multiplied times 2,848, that gives us 12,212,224 total pixels. We'll divide that by a million to convert it from pixels to megapixels, which gives us 12.212224 megapixels. We'll round that to two decimal places, so the correct answer in this case will be 12.21, because the number immediately following the one is four or less. Try this next example on your own. So in this example we're using an Olympus Tough TG6 digital camera. It can capture 4,000 pixels across and 3,000 pixels tall. Again we want to use our formula of dividing the total number of pixels by a million, but we can't do that until we calculate the total number of pixels in the image. So we'll need to multiply 4,000 times 3,000 which gives us 12 million. When we divide 12 million by a million, we get 12 even. So we want to round it to two decimal places, but we don't have to write it as 12.00 because zero is not, it doesn't count as a decimal, so you don't have to write it like that. So instead of writing it as 12.00, we'll just say this image has 12 megapixels. We can also use this information to be able to calculate the megapixels needed. So what if I knew the size of the image that I wanted to create, and I knew the resolution that I need for my project, what could I do to figure out how many megapixels I need to, to purchase, so I need my camera to be able to capture. The formula that we'll use is we'll basically just calculate the megapixel of the image. So we're going to do the same thing we just did, but instead of looking at it in terms of how big can the camera capture, we can work backwards and say, well, this is the size of image I want to print, or the size image I want to put on the web. And then we can calculate how many megapixels are needed to capture that image. So in this example, we want to print an image that's 13 by 19, which is quite a large print. Um, and we're going to print it, so we're going to multiply it times the resolution, which is 300. So 13 times 300 gives us 3,900 pixels across, and 19 times 300 gives us 5,700 pixels across. That's review. We've already done that earlier in this lesson. That's the steps for calculating the size of an image in pixels. Now that we know how big the image is in pixels, we can multiply those two values together. So 3,900 pixels across by 5,700 pixels tall tells us that this image has 22,230,000 pixels. If we want to convert that into being in terms of megapixel, we can divide that value by a million which will give us, oh, I have a typo here, it should be 22.23 megapixels. I will change that, so if you're watching this video, make sure that you write down 22.23 megapixels. Try this next example on your own. You want to produce an image that's 24 inches across and 18 inches tall, and you were told by your printer, the person who's going to print your image, that you need the image to be 150 pixels per inch, how many megapixels would be required to capture that size image? So 
So again, we need to figure out the size of the image in pixels first. So we'll multiply 24 times 150 pixels per inch and get 3,600 pixels across. And 18 times 150 pixels per inch, which will give us 2,700 pixels across. Then we can multiply those two values together, so 3,600 times 2,700, and figure out that this image would need to have 9,720 pixels in the image. And then if we divide that by a million, we can convert it to be in terms of megapixel, which gives us 9.72 megapixels. We're going to round it to two decimal places, but there, there's no rounding involved. There's no more numbers after that second decimal place. I've developed some practice problems for these types of questions as well. You can practice them and the answers will be on the next slide. That wraps up our lesson on resolution and image size. So at the end of this lesson, when I read through um, our recap, the things that I have listed should feel more comfortable than when we started. If I'm reading through these and you decide that you're confused or you don't remember, uh, go back and re-read the lesson or re-watch the, the lecture. And then if you still have questions, attend online office hours or the weekly live info session for extra help. So by now, we should be able to define resolution, right? It's the number of pixels per inch in an image and explain how it affects image quality, right? The higher the resolution, the higher the image quality and the higher the file size. However, we know, um, number two, that there are appropriate resolutions for print and web. Print is 300, web is 72, and that that can affect image quality and file size as well. We can calculate the size of an, in, of an image in inches if we know the resolution and the size of the image in pixels. And we can calculate the size of an image in pixels if we know the resolution and the size of the image in inches. But if we're missing either of those other two values, we will not be able to calculate the answer. We know what a megapixel is, and we know how megapixels affect how images are captured on a digital camera. And we know how to calculate how many megapixels are required if you know the size of an image you want to produce. If you have any questions, please attend online office hours for extra help.